it's been good, you know, getting used to everything. You know, it's been like three, four weeks. But as weeks go on, things get better. What's uh, What's been the toughest part of that? Um, waking up, <laughs> really. But um, like I said, it's been really good. So not too hard for me, I, um, at least. But it's been good. Don't let Nick hear you say that. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Most guys are just glad to get to campus and start. But, uh, we've read where way long time ago that you want to be a leader with this uh, with this class. Could you talk about that? Yeah, you know, um, since I've been here, I've been trying to keep all the guys in check. You know, just making sure all of us communicate with each other, all of us just hang out with each other. That means like going out, and getting something to eat. You know, coming here, getting some work in, no matter what it is, offense or defense, just coming here, um, staying together. Because become a family and part of the brotherhood. So all the text messages and all that start with you? Or? I'm not going to say it all starts with me because I don't really like taking all the credit for um, like people being here and the relationships that other people have with other um, football players. But, you know, uh, it's a group chat. You know, Jair can say something. Devin can say something. Keon can say something. But all of us have the responsibility to answer that and, you know, hang out with each other. CJ, because you're you're from just down the road, and because you were a very early pledge to the class, do you feel a little bit of a little bit of a, spinning off that question, like a little bit of a captaincy, like like somebody who is essentially front and center to lead this class as you get started, understanding it's really hard as a freshman to be here. Do you have you kind of gravitated toward that role a little bit, especially with your familiarity with the next Um, I try my best, you know. I'm in here, give 110 percent every day. Show that uh, that it's really. I'm not gonna say not hard because obviously, obviously it is hard. It's a big transition from high school to college. But um, show all the other guys that um, that are here coming in the summer. Like I was talking to Hero and Sunny, talking about the um, workouts um, this past weekend because they came up here. And um, the guys that are already up here, just trying to set a good example, just to fight. Team up north, ab workouts, just everything, just fight, give it hundred ten percent, everything you do. You know how uh, recruiting rankings can be all over the map, and obviously you're one of, the, I think you're the highest rated player in the class to come in this year. Does that at all affect the way that you view your prospects to play early in your career? How do you view your own expectations entering, and and what you what you want to achieve for yourself? Um. I think everybody like kind of pay attention to the rankings that's here, but like at this point, it really doesn't matter because um, you beat number one recruit in the country. And, you know, you come here and play horrible, and you won't even touch the field. But so, like I said, it's all about giving one hundred ten percent. You know, um, you know, Jair. I feel like he's very underrated, one of the best corners in the country, but doesn't really show that in the rankings. Same thing with Kaden Curry, but um, yeah, the rankings really doesn't mean that much to me. Okay, you were recruited by uh, certain coaches that are not here anymore. Uh, how did you take that? Um, what, what do you think of Jim Knowles so far? Uh, just kind of that whole change. Uh, how did that affect you? How do you, how do you view that? Um, it was hard, you know, a little bit because um, before Coach Washington did leave, uh, we, just, we all had a linebackers meeting. And he was talking about how we were going to shock the country everybody who Ohio State linebackers are. <coughs> the next day, the year that he's gone, you know, kind of hurt because he was a guy that was recruiting for two years. But um, I understand that it is a business, and Ohio State's going to replace good coaches with good coaches, too. So Coach Noah's been doing a good job, and all the new defensive coaches have been doing a great job, too. Do you have any feel for him yet? Yeah, he's, he's cool. He's a little mellow, but he's cool. <laughs> have you kind of looked at how you might fit in some of the tweaks they're probably going to make to the defense? Yeah, they said that um, they still want me at the wheel spot. You know, they had the Leo roaming around the um, defensive line. But they want me at the wheel spot, for sure. How would you describe yourself as a player? Uh, a guy who always gives 110% as long as he can. You know, um, blessed, waiting two years, leave it out on the field. Always team player. You know, if, um, if I got to block, I'll block. If I got to um, be a distraction, I'll be a distraction. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want to see my team succeed. CJ, you and Gabe early on were, were guys that were pledging this class at a position of need yeah. at Ohio State. How much of the discussion has that been among you all early, understanding that they need you guys and how that potentially 
motivates, excites, gets you going early in your career? You know, for me and Gabe, that's my roommate as well, but um, we kind of talk, talk about that sometimes, you know, just coming in here, shocking the world, you know, uh, always giving 110%, like I keep saying, you know, uh, just leaving out all on the field, you know, trying to learn defense, you know, it is a lot much more than um, high school defense, it was more complex, but we'll be ready for it, for sure. CJ, a lot of freshmen played last year, uh, started offense, defense, is that? Did you guys take note of, note of that as a class, that like there's a chance to come in, like if you're good enough to play right away? Yeah, but we understand that once we come in, that nothing's promised to us. So it's all about work and how hard you want it and how hard you want it. Because it's not just the football aspect, it's um, academics as well. So, you know, you got to um, handle things on and off the field. You know, there's watching film that's, you know, like I said, getting 100% on the field. Pay attention in class, make sure you want to see the tutor and all that other stuff. Will you, do you do that kind of like go to guys like Denzel Bird who played, started like right away as freshmen for like pointers or like things like that? Like, okay. Yeah, I go to, um, I talk to Denzel and uh, Trey a lot, you know, just to like get a feel on like how it affected them, like their mindset, you know. Um, I also talk to them sometimes about the NIL deals and things like that too. CJ, when you, when you keep referencing this you know, shock the world for the linebacker unit there, what's the mood like that you've sensed from two or three weeks of being in that like, damaged pride or whatever, trying to come back, bounce back from the last couple of years? What's it been like in there? What, what are the conversations like? You no, know, um, all the linebackers love each other, that's for sure. But um, all the linebackers also want to see each other succeed. Like right now, I'm working out with Tommy Eichenberg, that's my partner in the weight room. Man, it's crazy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it gets you right. You know, he's teaching me how to be Ohio State linebacker. So um, we all love each other, that's for sure. And we all are going to be successful. I think these uh, workouts tend to be, the winter workouts tend to be eye openers for the freshmen who yeah. come in and not used to the intensity. What was it like for you? Um, It really wasn't that bad for me because um, my cousin, Rob Langer, she went here. And once I committed here, I worked out with him for like a couple months in the summer, uh, before my junior year, and then after my junior year, I worked with him as well. So some of the stuff I'm familiar with, but you know, the tempo, that's really all that's different. What's the relationship? What's the relationship? Oh, me and BB, yeah. that's my cousin. Okay. How's he doing? He's good, you know, um, trying to figure out what's still what he wants to do. He still wants to make it to the league, but I talked to him a little bit, so. What's the how are you related? Uh, um, his mom is my uh, dad's sister. How much, how much of an advantage does that give you? At least you have somebody who can tell you what to expect and, and then through it. Yeah, you know, um, they just keep telling me to get my mind right, make sure I come in and stay focused, and, you know, um, not try to slack or anything like that. Did I, did I hear you right? Did you mention that Leo position when you were talking about what you've been playing so far? No, that's um. I mentioned that uh, he wants me at the wheel spot okay. and the Leo spot is be roaming around. I think that's what Kaden Curry is looking for. Okay. Well, um, what is kind of as just as an athlete, what do you feel like the most important thing you have to accomplish this winter heading into the spring? Um, learning the playbook because I feel like if I learn the playbook and I keep doing what I'm doing in the weight room, eventually once we get on the field, then I will show that I am capable of playing. CJ, what's just the reality of being an Ohio State football player so far compared to you know, your expectations coming in? You know, it's still kind of crazy that I am here. You know, because a couple months ago I was still in high school. But, um, yeah, the expectations really haven't changed for me because once I was in high school, I still had to, like I still had the same mindset that I had back then. It was to just come in and just work. So I know a lot of people feel like I have a target on my back a little bit. But um, I got to work for sure. Has there been anything that's been particularly eye-opening about your first month here? Mm, not really, because I've been, I've been up here a lot. I feel like I came to every home game, chill with a lot of players, so I'm kind of already familiar with everybody. CJ, obviously you were a big part in kind of developing this class, uh, you know, bringing in, you know, recruiting guys once you were yourself recruiting. And I'm, and I'm curious, now that you're, you've been around like a group of them, like, 
know, a part of the same team living together, things like that. I mean, are the guys around you what you expected them to be? Is it why you recruited them to come to Ohio State, or what has that been like actually as an early um, well, it really, it really wasn't just me recruiting them. You know, um, that's another reason why. Like the Captain Buck, I think is cool. I like it, but um, it's not all just me. You know, it's the coaches, it's the players, it's, it's their decision. I make sure that the recruits know that it's their decision. I'm not going to force them to come to Ohio State. But um, yeah, everybody here is it's the same thing. Cause, you know, we talk over social media. We have our own little group chat, but every, everybody's still the same. Yeah, I know you locked in like that early, but have you had any level of a relationship with those levels before you got hired here? No, I actually um, I pay attention to their defense a lot though, because um, I think they were they kept crawling higher and higher in the rankings. So um, I watched their game against Baylor, and I think they lost. But um, yeah, he's kind of in the middle of building his own. I don't know, brand is a word, but he's got a lot of different things going on. So, I mean, what is it like to watch a guy like that as he's kind of launching all these different things and if you're, if you're having a relationship? You know, it's really cool because um, I still talk to other players as well. You know, talk to Braxton, I talk to Zeke, um, Paris Campbell, uh, Troy Smith. Braxton and Troy had a little camp together just a couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, there's, I get, you get a different aspect from everybody. Hey, if things go well for you this spring and then in preseason, where do you where do you feel like you'll end up playing? What 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 what, what is the spot you think you'll see in this uh, Knowles defense? Um, he wants me to play the will, but um, like I said, I play wherever. He needs to play. Does that that's, excite you though? He wants you to play the will. I mean, that's yeah. that's sort of the, where the fun yeah. goes. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> you know, uh, I seen the guy who played will for Oklahoma State this past year had over 100 tackles. Lot. Me personally, I love getting after the quarterback, so I like that a lot. Did you get to watch any oh. Oklahoma State defense? Have you watched it at all? I mean, the, you know, with that stand up Leo a lot, moving around and things. It's almost like it's it's a point two five, but it's more like a three and a half, two and a half, you know? Yeah. Uh, what just stood out about it? I mean, a little bit you've seen it. Um, I really only watched the uh, um, Baylor game? The Baylor game, yeah. Maybe. But, um, that was really it. But I did. I watched a little bit of film against when they played Notre Dame. But yeah, I, I really like that defense a lot. Yeah, and what, why? What what stands out about it? From what you can think you have the quarterback. You know, they yeah. and um, the DBs. You know, they make sure that they lock everything down just for a couple of seconds, just so the guys can't get to the quarterback. Who else is going to be playing well? Um, I think still show going to be playing well. Um, right now, I think uh, Cody. Right now, obviously, I don't really know that much across where everybody's going to be playing. I, think I know it's early. Really, yeah. yeah. Uh, Steele is, is such an interesting story with him moving from running back. Like, what do you And then having such a good year last year at linebacker, uh, what do you think about that? You no, know, I think it was really well. It went really well for him. He's a great guy. He's a great player. Uh, I feel like me and him can probably go back and forth and bounce off from each other because – if he needs to breathe, I can go and do what he does, things like that. Uh, we both bring separate things to the table, but both of us can be very effective in the defense. So, yeah. you obviously want to but what do you sense from the veterans about how much do they want to make the fans, how much they have to improve the shooters and defense and what happens? They want it bad, that's for sure. You know, um, team meeting, things got really serious, and um, you can tell everything's around about to change. CJ, you were really like the leader of this recruiting class, always like reaching out to other players. Like, how how much of a responsibility did you take on that, and how proud are you that you were able to, you know, help put one of the best classes in the country together? Um, it's cool that you know. Um, I feel like it really wasn't all just me, because like I say, you know, it's, um, the coaches, it's their decision. I don't really force that on anybody. But, um, you know, it's kind of cool seeing that everything that fell in place, you know, um, Keon, I remember when he was committed to Arizona State, not Arizona State, but Arizona, you know, takes him almost every day. Just come to Ohio State, come to Ohio State, come to Ohio State. Um, I feel like he's going to be a really big piece of the offense, too, in this place. He's that guy.
got about five minutes for Building off that, CJ, just how do you feel your dating roots and dating connection? Being an in-state guy, how do you feel like that's going to be advantageous to you now that you are part of the Ohio State roster? Um, uh, I take pride in it a little bit, you know, because I'm an Ohio guy going through here at Ohio State. So, um, like I said, it's different for sure. But I feel like all the robberies and the losses, I take take them to heart. What are your early impressions of a guy like Chip, who, who just transferred to Ohio State? You know, he's not a true freshman uh, like you are. And uh, just well, what's he going to bring? Because he's also switching positions as well. Yeah, you know, Chip is very versatile. You know, he's a great guy as well. You know, he kind of gravitated to each other once he did. I'm not going to say he's really quiet, but he really doesn't talk to him like that. But kind of similar. a long lineage of great linebackers to play at Ohio State still like, in the league right now. Like Jerome Baker is the one that comes to mind now. But how much did that influence you coming to Ohio State? How much do you think about that every day when you practice like these are the guys who've done it at my position. I want to be that next guy. Um, I really watch a lot of um, past Ohio State football players. Um, I just want to bring that success back you know the past couple of years, guys have been putting down Ohio State's linebacker and talking about how they are, what they used to be, things like that. But I want to bring that that part back to Ohio State. You know, the Ryan Sims years, like you said, the Lakers, Marley Kim, things like that. I want to bring that stuff back. I'm thinking Ohio State fan, where are you going out there? I supported the team. You know, I knew a couple guys on the team, but like I said, I really wasn't just like a one team guy. I supported the guys on the team. Is there anything uh, particular that you've learned so far from working with Coach Knowles? Uh, you give him 110% every time that you can, you'll, you'll have a good relationship. He doesn't like guys that give half effort. He wants guys that always going to You give 110% to him, he's going to give 110% back to you. And if you want to be successful, he'll do it. I know that you were really close with Coach Washington during the recruiting process. Was that difficult when you thought that he wasn't going to be back this year? Um, it was, but it wasn't at the same time. Because I understand, like I said, it's, it's a business. So, you know, how I say it's going to replace got, um, good coaches with good coaches as well. Sorry. That last conversation. Last question. Right here. How would you describe it as an emotional? Did you talk to him? After? Yeah. You know, um, I talked to him. I told him thank you for everything that he's done for like, the past few years. Me and my family, I've always been there. And, uh, once I seen that he took the job at uh, Notre Dame, I told him I need to forward to see him. 